Assalamu alaikum. My name is Zuri Ab Sayyid. Um, I'm 23 years old and I'm from East London. Um, professionally, I work as a financial crimes compliance analyst and I've been brought up in London my whole life. What I would say is in terms of the mourning of Imam Hussein and you know why we go for Arba'in. I mean, why do 20, 25 million people each year and this year, this number is increasing. Why do they go to Imam Hussein? And there's a meaning to this. You see, when Imam Hussein was alone on the day of Ashura and he said, is there anyone to help me? Hal min Nasir and Yansulna. Only a few people helped the Imam, you know, 72 companions, his family, you know, to an extent, the women of his household, the children. But, you know, 1400 years later, we are all crying out to Imam Hussein, you know, Labbaik, oh Imam, this is my allegiance to you. I am here for you. And similarly, in the back of our minds is that how we are going there for Imam Hussein, we should also be ready for our 12th Imam. In terms of the concept of ziyarat, um, you know, it's, it literally could mean, you know, just visiting. So when you visit your relatives, that's a form of ziyarat. When you visit your friends at school, college, university, your colleagues at work, that is a form of ziyarat, you're visiting. But ziyarat, when it comes to the holy infallibles, and in particular Imam Hussein, means a bit more. And in my personal humble opinion, it means, you know, that we are paying allegiance to the Imam. You know, this holy being who, you know, went through so much in Karbala, when we are paying ziyarat to you, when, you, when we are visiting you, it's not that we're just visiting Imam Hussein. We are visiting Imam Hussein from the depths of our hearts. And we are saying, oh Imam Hussein, what you stood for, we will stand by. And what you opposed, we will oppose as well. As Imam Hussein said about Yazid, that, you know, a man like me can never give bayat to a man like him. So, you know, we can try and emulate Imam Hussein's character to the best of our ability. That's what ziyarah would mean for me. Visiting the Imam, but also following and copying the Imam's traits and what he stood for and what he did. My experience with Karbala uh, and the journey to Imam Hussein alayhi salam in Arba'in began first in 2014 when we first went. And as with all journeys, the first thing that you start off with is the planning. So in terms of planning, you know, you see throughout your life how people are going, they have their bags, sleeping bags, food, water and so on. So with that in mind, we planned out everything, like what type of rucksack we would have for the walk, um, what types of clothes we would wear, what essentials and stuff we would need. However, what we found was when we actually got to Karbala and towards from Najaf to Karbala, the walk, we probably did not need more than half of the things. So we were just carrying these things for no reason because Alhamdulillah, it's all provided. So the sleeping bag we brought, the extra food, it was at least, I think, 10 kilos I was carrying on my back alone. We needed none of that. Um, it's all provided. So that was one thing that we learned from. And in later years, we prepared accordingly. So that was the physical preparation. Spiritually, however, it, I felt it was a bit more, you know, you have to go to this place, you read this ziyara, you go to that place, this ziyara. It was to a degree a bit robotic. So, you know, preparing for that side, I was printing out all these ziyaras um, and where we would be visiting. But what I found was quite the opposite. So when you actually go to these harams and these, you know, zaris and these holy places, you know, it's more from what's in your heart. You know, you don't have much time to be standing there and reading around 20, 30 pages. And that too, if you don't understand what you're reading, you know, if you read one line and you understand its meaning, you build a better connection. So spiritually, from the first year, what we found was that, you know, it was very manual. Whereas in later years, from when we would go to Karbala and surrounding Ziyarats, it would be a bit more, you know, from the heart, you know, build that connection with the Imam and the Holy Personalities. So when, when I first went in 2014, the walk itself, you know, one of the main things that, you know, attracts people, you know, especially living in the West, we see these people in the great multitudes walking throughout from Najaf to Karbala. I think it amounts to around 80 kilometers or so. When I first went in 2014, we started our walk and it's, you know, again, you can see that it's, it's very spiritual. And it's like, you know, you're walking, you can see on your right side, maybe, you know, a family with their young child, 
this newborn baby and they've brought him along and they're walking as well. And you look towards the other way and see people in wheelchairs being pushed. But it's the determination that we're going to go to, Mahmoud Hussain. And then there's some people you meet who say, we've been walking from Basra and we've been walking for around 15, 16 days. And our walk is only three, but they, they've been walking for so long. And then elsewhere you see people who have said, no, we've walked from even further. We've walked from the Iranian border and so on. You know, everyone has their own journey. But personally for me, in, when I first went, it was very, like I said, peaceful. You know, you see there's food along the way. There's, you know, um, stations for people with blisters, medical treatment being provided. Towards the end of the walk, you even see people who, you know, when you've broken your bag, your wheelchair or anything, there's physical mechanics there doing it for you. They're helping you before you enter the holy shrine of Imam Hussein in whatever way they can. And what really touched my heart was when there's people serving you food and helping you in other ways, there's other people who don't have any of this. And all they have is a plate of dates with some honey and some sugar on it. And they're just presenting that. And they're hoping, they, they're, they're trying to, you know, physically force you to come and take one thing at least. If you're not going to eat a lot, take one thing from us. And it's not even about the language, you know, even if you don't speak the language, it's a language of love. Through, you know, their, their warm welcome and their behavior, they physically pull you away and they'll make you eat where they can. And if you can't eat anything, they'll say, just take one thing and then walk along. Take one thing from me though, you are the Zawar of Imam Hussein. They hold you in such high esteem. So that was in 2014. It was very, you know, fast paced because we were just trying to get to the shrine. We didn't really experience the taste, if I can say, of the walk itself. But in later years, when we went, again, we found, you know, we slowed down a bit and we experienced the walk a bit more. And you find so many interesting stories. Some people used to, you know, when there was a ban on the Arbaen walk, they would take steps. They would go for some work and then walk on from there. So they would make up excuses just to get to him, I'm saying. But Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, now in 2018, 2019 and throughout the years we are free to do what we, how we want to walk. Some people there have nothing to offer and they just have a box of tissues. Little, little children, four or five years old, just holding a box of tissues. As you walk closer towards Imam Hussein, other children, other khadims are there with just perfume. They're spraying perfume on you. You know, there's some, everyone has something to do and they're trying their best to serve you, which is really touching and it shows you the extent of their love. So in terms of preparing spiritually for the ziyarah of Imam Hussein on Arbaeen, at first, you know, it's, you print out all these things and you try and do it, you know, by steps and in a methodological way. However, what we found was when we actually arrived, it was more, you know, from what came from your heart and what you really meant. And it was more like a dialogue with the Imam that, you know, Imam, I'm here for you. I am remembering you and what you suffered from and I will act upon what you acted upon. And it, this is best exemplified when you first see the dome, the holy shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So towards the end of the 1400 poles, what you find is there's two different ways. You can take one straight road, which goes mostly to Hastabasa shrine. Obviously every year there's more security, so there's more, the routes change slightly. But there's a way to the right, which goes through two big bridges. And on one of these bridges, when you stand, you can see the shrine directly from far away. So when we were approaching this shrine, when I first went, you know, you start remembering, you know, when you were a little child, you went to the majalises with your parents, what you heard about the Imam, you know, what he went through, um, you know, it all just comes rushing to you. You can't really explain, it all just happens in your mind. And when you come to the peak of the bridge and you see the holy shrine, it's like, you know, everyone has their own appetite. Everyone feels something different. You know, for me personally, when I saw the shrine for the first time, it was like, am I really here? I started looking at myself, the zawars around me, started looking at the shrine again. It was just so beautiful, more beautiful than, you know, you see on pictures and, you know, through social media. When you're there in person, it's just stunning. It's something like out of this world. I know other people who, when they first saw the shrine, they just collapsed and they could not physically walk. They had to have brothers pick them up physically and take them a few more meters before they could walk again. They just collapsed. It's just something that, you know, it's, it's, it's to do with the heart and Imam Hussein's pull and attraction towards that. So in terms of seeing the shrine itself for the first time, 
So when we first got to Karbala, a part of the group thought that we would rest for the night after walking for three days and we would go in the morning. However, another part of the group, including myself, were very adamant that, you know, we've come here. You know, I've waited my whole life for seeing this holy Imam. I've just arrived. I can't wait a night more. You know, I just want to go now. Be it for a few minutes, I just want to go now. So we left as we were walking. You know, you see there's so many zawars. Uh, it's just amazing to see that, you know, so many people and you hardly, you don't hear at all anyone being crushed or a stampede or anything. So as soon as you entered the, I entered the Holy Haram, I could see, you know, on my left, it was Hazrat Habib ibn Zahir. On the right was the Shuhada Karbala. In front of me, it was Imam Hussein Shrine, you know. Imam Hussein, you, you've been listening to, you've been hearing about all your whole life. And it's just something that, you know, you're just mesmerized. You see the Holy Shrine and you're like, and you're like you know, Am I worthy of being here? You know, the Imam called me and you're just so humbled. You know, this is the grandson of the Holy Prophet of Allah. You know, the son of Imam Ali, Lady Fatima, the brother of Imam Hassan, brother of the Bas salam. You know, the great grandfather of Imam Mehdi, this holy Imam who, you know, some narrations say when you visit him, you get the thawab of countless Hajj, countless Umrah. And it's like you're there in his presence. And when I went there, I recalled another tradition which says that when you do, when the Zawars arrive for the Ziyarah of Imam Hussein, Imam Hussein sees all his visitors and he knows your generation, so who your father is and so on and so forth. And he knows what you're going through. He knows who you are. So just arriving there and looking at all this, it, you do feel emotional. It's something that you can't really, again, put into words, but you feel very, you know, out of this world, very serene, very relaxed. And that's what I picked up on my first time. And for a second there again, you're like, am I really here? <laughs> you, you can't, you know, put things, you know, you can't put a word to it. It's just something that your heart connects with. And another particular thing I noticed was on top of the main door to the Haram, there is a quote from the Holy Prophet. And it says, Qala Sayyid al Kawnain, Hussein al Minni, wa ana min al Hussein. You know, the Holy Prophet has said, Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. And this was so beautiful, this one quote on top of the main door, and it emphasizes the personality and character of Imam Hussein. When I was there, I thought, you know, I would pray for, you know, so and so person. I had a whole list, you know, Imam help me with this and so on. But when you're there, one of the main things I prayed for was, oh Imam Hussein, help me when I'm alone in my grave and on the day of judgment, because you are one of the Sayyidah Shababi Ahl Jannah. You know, you're the leaders of the youth of paradise. Uh, in terms of, you know, when you also see the other companions, you see on the right side, you know, all of Imam Hussein's companions, they have their names written on them as well. You know, Wahab, Burair, Saeed, all these companions, great, great companions. And again, it's emotional because when you look at them and you think there was 30,000, some narrations say even more. And these 72 never joined the 30,000. But there was many from the 30,000 which came and joined the 72. And it, sh it shows you their power and their vision. They knew we were going to die. We we're going to fight for our Imam. But we know we're going to live forever because we're with our Imam anyway. And it's true. Till today, until the Day of Judgment, their names will be associated with Imam Hussein. What, what a great maqam to have. And then towards the left, you see Hazrat Habib ibn Mazahir. And what the scholars had said was with Hazrat Habib, he has his own grave. He could have been buried with the Shuhadai Karbala, but he has his own grave because that shows how his maqam is higher as well. And it's the same Habib who Imam Hussein wrote to. The only person from the companions who Imam Hussein wrote to and said, Oh Habib, I need your help. So again, it sh that is another emotional aspect where you see, you know, the Imam Hussein's best friend, such a high personalities. And you see many Zawars going there with the Hajjats and praying as well. After visiting, visiting the shrine of Imam Hussein in Islam, um, which again was, you know, quite heart touching, we went to the the shrine of Hazdabas al Islam, which is a few meters away. You walk through Bain al Haramain and you reach Hazdabas, and again, it has its own emotions, you know, its own feelings. You remember what Hazdabas stood for, how he sacrificed all he had for his brother, and you know the valor of this great man, and he is known as Bab al Hawaij. So the door of the wishes. So if you present your wishes to him, inshallah, it will be accepted. So after the visitation of Hazrat Abbas we went to the different maqams. 
So, you know, there's the maqam of Hazrat Ali Akbar, maqam of Hazrat Ali Askar, maqams, and where the other Imams came and they mourned Imam Hussein. For example, the maqam of Imam Qadim alayhi salam, which is nearby, the maqam of Imam Sadiq, the maqam of Imam Mahdi. So, in particular, when you go to these maqams, you get a real sense of how Karbala was itself on the day of Ashura. So, you know, now there's buildings, there's shops, hotels nearby. You know, 1400 years ago, when Imam Hussein was there, it was just a desert. There's many other maqams, such as the Khaimagas, the tents. And what's beautiful about the tents is, it has its own peace. And it's like, you know, you can imagine how the tents would have been like on the night of Ashura. And even on the night of Shami Gariba, you know, the night of when Imam Hussein was martyred and these tents were burnt. You know, how the ladies, Lady Zainab, Lady Umm Kulthum, and the Lady Rukayya, Sakina, what they must have gone through without Imam Hussein and the, the men of their household. So these were some of the maqams. There's one maqam which again is close to my heart um, personally. It's the maqam of Hazrat Hur alayhi salam. Hazrat Hur, his maqam is roughly six kilometers away from the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussein. And what some people do is they walk towards Hazrat Hur's grave as well. Some people take, you know, a, a taxi, others take, you know, a motorbike or so on. But it is highly encouraged to visit Hazrat Hur as well. And again, this is the beauty of Imam Hussein, where the Shuhada of Karbala are buried next to him and Hazrat Habib ibn Muzahir. Hazrat Hur alayhi salam stands as an example, a beacon of hope for people like myself and, you know, the lovers of Imam Hussein that, you know, whatever we are, we are trying our best. And if we truly, sincerely love the Imam, he will do our shifa, like he did for Hur. Hur is buried on his own. He has his own maqam. You have to make that extra effort to go to Hur's grave. And this shows you how high Imam Hussein holds him. And when you arrive there, I personally, when I went there, I saw with my own eyes that there were birds who were coming into the shrine and they were performing like a, a tawaf, you could say, of the chandelier. So, you know, you have the shrine and you have the chandelier on top. They were performing tawafs and they were going out and then more birds were coming in. And then there were around four or five birds that were doing this. And I kept looking and they kept doing this and doing this. And then they just left together. So, you know, it has its own spirituality as the Hur's place, Makam. And you can see how, you know, Hur on the day of Ashura, on the night, the ninth of Muharram, where he was debating himself, you know, I see before me heaven and hell and how he chose the way of heaven, you know, the path to heaven, which was Imam Hussein. He was essentially responsible for stopping Imam Hussein and his, his caravan, but he truly repented and he had respect for Imam Hussein and Lady Fatima and that's what changed his heart and today you can see he has his own maqam. So that's something that had touched me personally. When you go to Hazrat Hur's maqam, you can see that, you know, this person, what he stood for, how he made the change, and how we can similarly make such a change in our lives, inshallah. As with all things in life, there is a farewell. And the farewell from Imam Hussain al Islam is one of the most hardest things for me personally, in terms of, you know, you go there and you say to the Imam, you know, Imam, I'm leaving now, but, you know, please don't make this my last ziyara, and you Pour out, pour out whatever's in your heart to the Imam before leaving. And with me personally, it takes me a long time to come out. And, you know, it's, it's like you, you're just there and you, a part of you is saying, you know, Imam, please keep me here with you. Another part is saying, you know, oh, Imam, why do I have to go? You know, I'm going to go back to my normal life now. And, you know, but there's peace with you. Everything I want is with you and I have to leave now to go back to my working life. So it's, it's, it's highly, highly emotional, you know, you, the, which is the reason why it takes me so long, you know, you are physically, you know, just with the Zari. And similarly, when we're there by the Zari of Imam Hussein, especially when you're leaving, it's like, you know, you are at such a holy place. Do I really want to go? There's so much barakats, so many things I've gained. And now I'm going to be leaving the Imam. So one positive thing I took was that, our oh, Imam, I'm leaving you now, but this is only a physical separation. I am sure, and this is something I promise you, my Imam, that I will maintain the spiritual connection I have with you. I will make sure throughout my life, you know, whether you're on the tube, the train, 
you know, going to work at break time, when you come home, before you sleep, in all aspects of your life, that, oh Imam, I'm going to keep you in, in my mind, in my memory. And I'm going to hold that spiritual connection with you until the next time I see you. So that's one positive thing. And certainly when I came back home as well from the first time I went, you know, you feel very, you know, again, the first few days, it's quite, you're quite depressed. You're quite, you know, sad. You know, you, you can't hear the talawat of the Quran, the ziyarat's happening because you're back home. But what changes you bring in yourself, it depends on how you are. I know brothers who have gone there, they didn't pray. And as soon as they've come back, they've kept up their prayers. They've brought, back the, brought about that change in themselves. Me personally, when I had come back, I had more patience. So, you know, everyone goes through a lot of things in their life. Me personally, I felt I had developed more patience and more endurance. And it was purely because of my connection with the Imam. And likewise, I'm sure many other Zawars would say the same thing. You feel that, you know, what I'm going through is nothing to what the Imam went through. And that's what helps you, you know, throughout your life. So that was my big change, which I felt, you know, had harnessed itself within me. If I could say one thing to the viewers watching this now, um, who are planning and debating on whether to go to al or not, I would say, follow your heart and just go. You, you don't need to worry about, you know, the language, the food, any other basics, it's all provided. Just make sure that when you do go, you remember what the Imam, who the Imam is, you gain that ma'rifah, and you are able to build that connection on the back of this. So it has such high thawab, such high rewards. You know, Imam Bakr Islam had said that, you know, if I, I fear that if I tell you the reward for visiting Imam Hussein, people would leave some of their other acts. So, you know, Imam Hussein's the reward of visiting Imam Hussein is so high, so high. Another touching example is of Ibrahim Mujab. Ibrahim Mujab was from the sons of Imam Qadim Islam, and he's buried in Imam Hussein's shrine. With Ibrahim Mujab, it is said that when he went, he was going to the shrine of Imam Hussein, they stopped him and they said that if you want to visit Imam, you're going to have to pay a high price, a very high price. And Ibrahim Mujab said he felt quite nervous and he asked them, well, what price would I have to pay? And the guards replied, we're going to have to take your hands away from you. So we're going to cut your hands off. And Ibrahim Mujab felt very relieved. And he said, that's it? Just my hands? And the guards were a bit shocked because they thought Ibrahim would not go. And they said to him, yes, we're going to cut your hands off. He said, that's fine. I have my hands. For Hussein, you can cut my hands. I thought you were going to ask about wealth, or something else that I don't have. And I could not visit the Imam. But these, this is what I have. Yes, you can take my hands. And he's buried in Imam Hussein's shrine. And he is known as Ibrahim Mujab because when he said salam to Imam Hussein, after going through such things, Imam Hussein replied back to him. This is another form of encouragement where we are free to go now. There's nothing stopping us. But it's just about making that extra effort. If I could say in one sentence, the ziyarah of Imam Hussein, which again, it's quite impossible to, but if I could, I'll try my best. I would say, visit Imam Hussein so that you are not a stranger in paradise. And what I mean by this is, when you visit Imam Hussein, your, your status, your maqam, the blessings in your life will be so much more, tenfold, hundredfold, so much more, that you will feel it in this world and the hereafter. In the hereafter, you'll be with the Imam, inshallah. So why not? I hope, I pray that likewise, you know, we are able to go to the ziyarah of Imam Hussein year upon year upon year. And inshallah, may this thing, you know, may this spiritual aspect, may this um, process be passed down to our children and our grandchildren as well, inshallah. Thank you, لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين 
Let me hear your voice. Let me hear your voice. 